When we had last left Team Watcher, they had entered the bowels of the White Void, the furthest reaches where no mere mortals were meant to tread. And down there, they had one final confrontation with the Lich Dragon Lord Nerosilurius, who the, the Watcher managed to trick into confronting none other than the mythical Beast of Winter itself. Slain by its hand, the Beast of Winter angrily turned on Team Watcher, but miraculously they managed to slay this incredible entity. However, it was not as all had appeared, for in fact the Beast of Winter regenerated after being defeated, but decided to spare them <laughs> after all the help. And so Team Watcher managed to close the Veet Mouth and reseal the trouble that was pouring forth from the Rhymebound Temple. And so Team Watcher set their sights on future endeavors, but would come to quickly be reminded that they had business elsewhere. This is Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire, the Beast of Winter? <laughs> As it turns out, gentle viewer, we still do have business here at Harbinger's Watch. Well, maybe not, but specifically in. at the Rhinebound Temple. You will recall I brought this up earlier. This, that sister quest, the one where we had to go look for Bride's sister. Remember, she was inside. Bride was inside of one of these houses, the Harbinger's Dwelling. Hanging out over there and asked us to go find her sister, who she thought maybe was dead and that we had killed. And because we didn't find anything regarding that, I had assumed that we did, in fact, kill her. But, as it turns out, was going through quest log, and yo, we still have this active. So we need to scour the Rhinebound Temple and look for this person. Holy shit. Maybe part of the world state has changed at the Rhinebound Temple? I'm not sure. But we will definitely give it our best. Travel out there. Climb the rope. And you'll see we have Maya with us now. I swapped out the party members. Thought it'd be a good idea to get XP on her. And also, I was kind of intending to bring her with us to Slayer Seeker Survivor. But then I realized, oh shit, we actually have to get further in the main story. Because I was trying to figure out, how do we even begin it? Because we don't yet have a quest in our quest log, similar to how for the Beast of Winter we had an entire section dedicated to it. We don't yet have that for Slayer Seeker Survivor. Or, of course, the Forgotten Temple? Something... Forgotten... Something. Forgotten Temple, I think. Right? It's Temple, isn't it? I'm not sure. But, we don't have any of that, and that is because we are not far along enough in the main quest. Holy shit. So what we actually should do, after we get done here, is... fill out some of these side quests and stuff, and explore everything. And then finally head over to Malgren's Teeth. Right. All I'm right. Listening. Which seems like Give it'll be a order. big turning point in the stir in the story, in the story, because holy shit, evidently some DLC activates after you deal with whatever happens there. Right. So we'll do all that, and of course, spared myself any spoilers, best as possible. And you know what? Did a pretty fucking good job. Let's see. Let us descend the rope. Oops. Hang on. I'm not nearby enough. There we go. And descend. Check out the Rhinebound Temple, all that. I was kind of debating whether to bring Maya or Takehu. But I think we'll bring Maya, right? Get her some XP. I'm kind of leaning toward bringing Takehu with us for some of the questing in the core game, right? Because I think he might be our lowest level party member. Of, or, like, of the core companion group. I think he might be our lowest level at the moment. There we are. And he's got some pretty sweet-ass abilities, right? Especially thanks to his Water Shaper capabilities. So which way should we check here? Should we check this? The West Cave? Why not? We'll check this, and if there's nothing in here, we'll go back out the way we came, and into the other. Because there's only the three sections. The one that contains the Veet Mouth, this one on the side, and then the one where the Imp was at. Right? Where the imp was going buck wild and all that shit. I'm thinking maybe we did something there to change the world state. 
in one of these. Maybe when we picked up that stuff off of the imp. Right? The gem that let us enter the Veep Mouth. I do not know. Alright, so yeah, here's where we mercilessly slew a whole bunch of those cute bears. And over here... Oh, this is actually... Okay, this is actually a side area connected to the Veep Mouth Chamber. Very well. And there's nothing here. This is not... Why not? That person's sister. No. That was just a body. Okay. Over here... Nope, nope, nope. So hopefully it, it should be in the other section then, right? Where the imp was at. Let's see. Continue exploring the dead flow. Which, yeah, that's what the entire iceberg is called. I continually forget it. I'm quicker to remember the temple or Harbinger's Watch than I am that this is called Dead Flow. Or The Dead Flow. Which, frankly, is a great name. I think. Dead Flow. Better than Harbinger's Watch. Eh. I mean, Harbinger's Watch kind of plays into their fun goofiness, right? Of their whole religious system. <laughs> right? Because they are all, I guess in a way, consider themselves Harbingers of end times. Alright, so it'd have to be here. Maybe it's out this? I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's see, speed Let's time go. up. Let's do a quick save in case we run into someone and get into combat or whatever. Here we go. Yeah, we checked out- No way! This person was not here the whole time, were you? Because didn't we come in this room and look all around? Surely not. Alright, these dudes have probably finally come to life. Remember a while back we were like, man, these guys are going to come after us. But they did not. Alright, mm -hmm. but you know what else I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to steal from her. There we go. Let's get our detection taken care of. And we'll slip on right over here. Oop, game is hitching a bit. Probably a dare pulling out. Yep. <laughs> Man, you can really see what triggers it, huh? So easily. Oh, look. Rhyme Construct Fluid. Wow, you can get some off of her. All right. There we go. Eh? And I hello. know that smell. Beer and furs and fires. It's been a long time since a harbinger made it over the top of the berg. She turns her attention from the fallen construct and grimaces at you. Aren't you Bride's sister? Careful, you're talking to the Dusk Speaker. Actually, I'm not a Harbinger. Hmm. Let's see. Let's let's just bring up the sister. Aren't you Bride's sister? Oh no. Don't tell me she's fallen in with the rest of those fools. The Harbingers are too soft to worship the beast properly. Me and the other pilgrims found a new faith here, at the top of the berg. A faith that made us strong. Hmm. It was only a matter of time before they hired someone to stop us. I'll bet the Harbingers can't stand how deliciously miserable we are. <laughs> Her dry lips peel back in a painful grin. What are you doing up here? Bride said you were part of a pilgrimage? What are you doing up I'm here? I'm casting off this putrid mortal body of mine and trading it in for something better. She knocks on the metal carapace of the fallen construct with pride. Oh, she's going to try and animate herself into that thing. By hammering my soul into this wretched instrument, I can right. become the guardian this temple deserves. Hmm. It seems like we can exhaust most of this, right? Bride said you were part of a pilgrimage? It took our best climbers and their scouting bears, but we summited the berg. Their scouting bears? The things we saw at the top. Even now, my mind is bending around the vision of it. Her eyes unfix from the conversation, but she shakes herself back into the moment. You don't walk away from a climb like that untouched. Huh. What do you prove by turning yourself into a construct? I don't think she's trying to prove anything. She just thinks that it's the quickest way to fulfill, I don't know, her religious doctrine, in a way. I think you're better off returning to Harbinger's Watch. Sounds like you'll enjoy being a construct. How can I help? Well, good luck. <laughs> All right. Let's hear her out, though, because I don't think this will progress it. What do you prove by turning yourself into a construct? Prove? 
how easily an outsider like you misses the point. No, it's because she's trying to devote herself more fully to the cause. A construct feels nothing but duty. When simple instructions are your world, pride and self are carved off like glacial ice. Sacrifice and emptiness rule in the white void. It is my honor to give everything I have, everything I am, for the glory of the beast. Man, dude, the Beast of Winter is a big jerk, though. <laughs> I asked him, and he did not say no. Let's see. I think you're better off returning to Harbinger's Watch. This place has shown me wonders, and I have no plans to leave. I've seen serpents made of ice encircle the moon. What? I've seen colors beyond our perception ribbon across the stars. Yo, she is fucking high as hell right now. I'm a changed woman. I sleep no longer. This bloated husk of mine is bound for the worms, but my soul is made for eternal service. Huh. <laughs> this dialogue. Well, I'm convinced. Let's get you into that construct. <laughs> uh, forget I brought it up. Let's see. Religion check. Slash mystic. Insight check, 10. Laborer check. Dissident. Oh. Huh. You know, maybe in thinking about it, if I were if it were up to me, I'd probably I might go with dissident over a drifter if I were remaking my character. I don't know. One or the other. Let's see. Well, I'm convinced. Let's get you into that construct. Perhaps we uh shouldn't put the mad woman inside the hostile machine. You'll help me. That's great. Time to cast this body aside like a worn-out fur. She rubs her hands together and gestures toward the construct. The only question is how we go about it. I wonder if we can sabotage it, right? We gain her trust and sabotage the entire situation. She props her chin on her fist and nods. You didn't have a plan? The people who built this temple probably left some tools or instructions lying around. Now that we've set decency aside, the rest should be simple. <laughs> All right. You didn't have a plan. I only just came up with the idea when you strolled in. Haven't exactly had enough time to put all of this to the test. But isn't that in the spirit of adventure? I didn't show up completely empty-handed. I have some of these. And one of these. From the depths of her pocket, she produces a palmful of Adra shards and twisted lengths of copper all dusted with lint <laughs> yeah she's just got little scraps of stuff to build some sort of like animancy machine then she unslings a dented mallet from her belt will these help she gives the mallet a practice swing it's a start we'll hope for the best this could get you killed but i suppose that's the point step aside i'm a watcher we'll figure something out i've changed my mind i want no part of this Huh. Yeah, I don't think I want a part of this, but also I'd like to convince her to stop it. If I go with this, does this back me out of the quest or anything? We'll go with this and see where it takes us. I've changed my mind. I want no part of this. No? You're lost then. Let me know when you grow a stomach for adventure. Alright. I think you're better off returning to Harbinger's Watch. This place has shown me wonders. Right. I'm a changed woman. I sleep no longer. This huh. bloated husk of mine is bound for the worms, but my soul is made for eternal service. If I had two more religion, we could totally pass that check. Alright, forget I brought it up. Worry not. In time, I will have forgotten everything. Alright, let's see. Two more religion. We should be able to just, like, smoke some weed or something and get two religion, right? Let's see. Two religion... Hmm. Or do we have some sort of device? No, we probably gave... If we have some sort of item that does it, we probably gave it to Jody. Right. Don't we have some sort of religious unguent or something? Let's see. Hmm. This green stuff? How about this other green stuff? No. How about this? No. There's got to be something that increases our religion. Because we already discerned that there's one of each. Mechanic, sleight of hand, stealth. Scroll down here. Ooh, look, this. Yep, yeah, look at this. 
Oh, yeah. All right. Let us move our Taruturu Chu, I guess. There we are. Let's take a nice big fucking hit off of this incense. Do a quick save just as well. And boom. Oh yeah, I drank it. Oh my gosh, I'm all smoky. You here to pull right. your weight? Well, just to say how yo. How yo. An informal Ordhyoma greeting. Eris wipes oil from her palms and gestures for you to free speak freely. Think you're better off returning. This place has I'm a changed woman. All right. I sleep no longer. This bloated husk of mine is bound for the worms. But my soul is made for eternal service. Wouldn't the ultimate expression of faith mean letting your body wither and rot over time? Yeah, that's a fair point. But that will take years. I can't serve the beast and is more like this. She gestures down at herself. I hate my limitations, my hungers, my frailty. The beast can suck my marrow and discard Ugh. me. This is true perfection. Ugh. She knocks on the iron shell, this time with more conviction. Religion check of 15. Well, no way in hell we're passing that. Oh, look. Mystic and Monk there. Huh. I wonder how come Monk wasn't in the last one. Alright. Or Diplomacy of 14. Vatnir, don't you think her asceticism would be an inspiration to the other Harbingers? You're just going to reject everything I suggest, aren't you? Let's see. Let's have Vatnir in on this, right? It recommended we bring him, so here you go, Vatnir. Here's your chance. Vatnir, don't you think her asceticism would be an inspiration to the other Harbingers? Vatnir blinks in surprise. His mouth falls open, closes, then opens again with a ragged cough. Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, we'd certainly uh, benefit from the perspective of one so well acquainted with life on the dead flow. <laughs> <laughs> nice offer. But I doubt I could dig the snow out of a harbinger's ears. Oh shit. No dice. You're just going to reject everything I suggest, aren't you? What kind of stake have you got in this anyway? She rests her hands on her hips and gives you a measuring look. Just walk away. Tell anyone who asks that you didn't see anything. Oh fuck, we're gonna help her, aren't we? <laughs> Oh, man. See, maybe if we continue along this, we can somehow sabotage it all. All right, fuck it. We're going all in. I changed my mind. Let's get you in there. There is the spirit. When we're done, you'll swear you've never seen a happier corpse. She beams with pride as the two of you get to work. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh my god! What have we done? Uh, Pilgrim Eris, what's up? The construct regards you with no evident emotion. Oh my god. This is fucked up. But she did want it! Leave it to me. She did want to do it. Oh, good lord. Is this. Is this okay? Did we do a good thing? I don't know. If someone wants their own destruction, should you... Should you permit it? Huh. Because they are of sound mind, it's just that... I don't know, they're, the wool has been pulled over their heads as far as... Well, because even... Even if you consider whether or not... Because their worship of Rimurgand is still valid, right? Although we know the, their origin, they still do wield power. Hmm. It, it just comes back to the main question of a lot of dilemmas and pillars of eternity. What is a god? What is it like? And even if they are a god, does it make it okay? I guess if they want to, right? It's their choice. It's not my choice to make, is it? Fuck. Fuck. I guess I'm happy with that. I don't fucking know. Let's see. Climb the rope. At least she didn't blow up or something, right? There's that. <laughs> I mean, if we just left her there, she probably would have just blown up and killed herself for nothing. At least now she's become a gigantic robot woman, right? <laughs> Isn't that better? 
I don't, <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Good lord. That one started off kind of funny, right? Playing into the Harbingers and all their wacky bullshit. But then it got kind of dark at the end. <laughs> Alright, head on down here. Descend. Maybe we should just lie to her. <laughs> Say that she, we found her dead. <laughs> Rather than that we turned her into a robot. Oh god. Do you think she could tell? Can you tell whose soul is inside of a construct? Maybe a Watcher could, but certainly not Brythe or whatever the fuck her name is. Yeah, we'll just tell her it all worked out. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. There we are. All the way over here. Into this dwelling. Great. Who knows? Maybe she'll want to become one as well. Right? Man. Could you have even passed that check? I don't know. Because we did one and it didn't work. We followed it kind of pretty far. I guess you would need high religion or something to get it to work out favorably. And that's just not something we have. Okay. Over here. And Harbinger Brythe. What is up? Feyin Heimkammer, Dusk Speaker. Was there something else you wanted to know? No, but I found your sister. You did? Where is she? Is she... is she alive? Oh, God. Should we lie to her or tell her the truth? <sighs> she asked me to transfer her soul into a construct, so I did. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> now let's tell her the truth. Fuck it. Let's see what happens. I did it! She did what? And you let her? I must... I have to go see her. She blinks rapidly, still processing the revelation. Go then. She's waiting for you. That might not be the best idea. A bluff check. Eris said she hoped you'd never see her like that. Ooh, shrug. <laughs> Fuck. Let's see. That might not be the best idea. I have to find her. Thank you, Dusk Speaker. Thank you for everything. Wait, is she happy about it? What the fuck? Is that quest complete? Wow, yeah, she paid me! <laughs> she paid me in everything! What? What a weird little quest. Alright, sure. Yeah. Clearly no one intended for <laughs> a character with different stats than I. <laughs> but I appreciate the, the failure, right? The failure of it, I, I can I can definitely appreciate that. As someone who played through a lot of New Vegas, intentionally picking skill checks that I would fail. I appreciate it. Alright. Let us travel down here and get the hell on out of here. Because we still have a lot of shit to take care of in the core game. We'll swap out Vatnir for Tikehu, right? I think that's a good call. And we are back. Goodness. It was a nice reprieve from the long load screens that you would get in when you warp into the world map, huh? All right, let's consult our quest log here. What have we got? So we can wait for this, but because it, it already wants us to wait, right? This seems like it's also going to give us an update once we finish certain parts of the main quest, right? So how about we check out this? Island's far to the southwest of Nekataka. We could also go do Nemnok now, I bet. Hmm. Yeah, let's do mapping the archipelago. West Wakara Reef. Southwest of Nekataka. Okay. Let's see. So there's Nekataka. Here's the reef. Well, I guess some of the islands must be here then, right? Let's see. Oh. West of the Wakara Reef. And the Kangadi Islands. Okay. Where are the Kangadi Islands, though? I do not know. Huh. Here we are. Let's see, what is this island? This is just some weird-ass place. Maybe we investigate this. Could this be it? No, this is way southeast. What is this place? Hmm. Yeah, let's check it. Dock here. 
There we go. What have you got for me? Water. And hardtack. Man, look at that storm. That is dangerously close. Is that storm just stuck there? It is not moving at all. Okay. Let's investigate the shipwreck. You find an abandoned Dow. Doe? Half buried in the sand. Wind whistles through gaping holes in its hull, making the sun-bleached wood creak and moan. Unopened cargo crates lie scattered around the wreckage. Sift. You take some time to explore the wreckage. Oh, look. Hey. And find an un... And find a, an usual object tucked away in a far corner of the hold. Wait. It's probably unusual. <laughs> After spending a few minutes digging it free from the wreckage, you discover it's actually a poleaxe of a specially f fine make that glitters with a strange internal light. Lord Darren's Vulge. Okay. It is exceptional. Oh, look at all this. Okay, we'll have to look at it in our inventory. You return to the ruined vessel. Search it. Shitload of money. Nothing left. Huh. There you have it. Okay. Oh, this is a soul-bound item. Okay. Yeah, let's put some stuff on our ship here. Toss the water up there. And this just as well. The fruit. There we go. Good. Okay, let's see. What is this thing? A poleaxe two-handed. Yep, yep, yep. Binds with barbarian, druid, and fighter. Huh. 10% chance on hit with the weapon to activate lightning strikes. From the sea song, Lord Darren's Lads, author unknown. Well, the year I found myself first mate, t'was the spring of 2668. Left my home and lover dear. We had a letter from Adir, given plunder and rights. Deerwood ships were up for a fight. Damns them once and damn them twice. Lord Darren promised gold and glittering prizes. We set sail, hailing, heading Deerwood bound. Two weeks at sea and a rebel we found. We were brave young fools and surely mad. We couldn't be stopped. We were Darren's lads. Lord Darren called for ramming speed. Draw your blade, said he. Let's make them bleed. I miss my home and lover dear. We closed and crashed and leapt aboard. Bled them more than they could afford. Damn them once and damn them twice. Lord Darren promised gold and glittering prizes. Lord Darren with his Volge fought true. Wrought thunder and sparks and led us through. We were brave, young fools, and surely mad. We couldn't be stopped. We were Darren's lads. Huh. Neat. All right. Yeah. Something that we'll have to look up is the uh, progression of it. All right. One thing I would enjoy is if... Because I, I find myself every time I get a soulbound item looking up the stats of it anyway... Why not just show it to me, right? Sure, leave the... Hide the lore from me, but... Just show me the the stats that it'll get. Right? Especially for ones that... Yeah, because you have to work toward all of them. Because it, it'd be so shitty if you had to work and... It ended up having stats on it that you just don't want. Right? I don't know. I feel like it'd be... Just skip the middleman of me having to go check... The Pillars of Eternity gamepedia or whatever. You know? Because it's, it's not like it's an interesting or fun surprise. You make a commitment to it, right? I don't know. Alright. So where is this other place? The Kangadi Islands. Where are they? Is this them? Are these the Kangadi Islands? I'm not sure. Huh. Let's see. There's Cavern of Zar Tuk Tuk. Let's check this. I found an island of overgrown jungle, and on it, a an ancient Juana ruin overrun by Lagufoth. Okay. Where was that? Oh, the Scowling Zarup Expanse? Is that it? 
No, overrun by Lagufas. Oathbinder Sanctum. Let's see. Ruins of Amira's Roost? Maybe this was it. Right. Island of Overgrown Jungle, Juana Ruin, that could be it. Okay. So this, yeah, look, Murkwater Lagoon. Maybe that's something we need to pay attention to. Alright. Fort Deadlight, down and around here. Avalian Mill. Sand Swept Ruins. Oh, maybe this. Maybe this shit. Huh. Okay. Yeah, we can look through here on these islands. Temple of Tangaloa Ruins. Yeah, we checked all that. How about these islands? What are these? Kangadi Isle. Okay, here we are. Yeah, so it's not labeled on our big map. Let's see, what is our current bounty? Don't we have one? Yeah. Track to an island east of Magrin's Teeth. Okay. And that's our only bounty at the moment. Alright, fair enough. Let's see... Hmm. It may well be... one of these two places here, right? Murkwater Lagoon, or... more likely down here, Sandswept Ruins, right? That would make sense. Let's see, is there anything else here, sort of by Fort Deadlight? Around this section? That we haven't already seemingly been on? Because it looks like we've been on this island. And not that there's not really anything else to explore on it. Let's see, over here... Oh, look. What the fuck is this? Oh, it's just a rice farm. Okay. There we are. We'll set sail all the way down there. Good, good, good. We need to keep an eye on our morale. Potentially swap back to less appeasing food. Alright. It's just rice here. We'll buy some. We're in the area. Why not? We don't have to deal with a load screen. There we are. And I'll take that. And that. Good. Cool. We could also buy tar loaf. Why not? Great. Alright. Head on back out. Let's check out our ship here. Whoops. H. Okay. And let's throw that up there. This right here. Throw the hard tack up. May as well just start stacking it, right? Okay. Cool. Now, let's go over here to these sand-swept ruins. Right. Do a quick save just as well. Alrighty. Yeah, I got a lot of shit here. This has got to be something, right? Okay. Check this out. Oops. Oh, shit. There we are. Now, am I mistaken, or, or was Corroded Wasteland one of the locations of those terrible assholes? Right? Let's see here. Other... Or what was the name of those books that all had information on those dudes? Like the mega bosses or whatever. Here they are. All right. Let's see. Does this give information? Hmm. Fire spitting behemoth. Let's see. Where are we at? Let's see here. Okay, 38. Oh, hey. Oh, shit. This really for real might be it. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Is this... Could this for real be it? Huh. We'll go up close to it and then check it out. Alright. Abandoned village. Get some loot loot here. You come upon an abandoned Hawana village. The few of its huts that haven't been blown across the Deadfire countryside lie in ruins. Trees felled by strong winds litter the village's periphery. A handful of structures still stand, however, and might hide something worth salvaging. Let's search it. Take some time to search it. Find nothing. Let's try it again. Hey, we got a bunch of drug. <laughs> and some pyrite. A blunting belt. Okay. Shitload of rice. And nothing. That's it. There we are. 
Let's check out this little pool. There we go. And let's see, Lowland Sands, Winding Pass. Okay, let's get as close as we can. Now, let's see, is this it? Bring this up. 38, 47, okay. Let's check all of these, actually. Do they all give coordinates? I think so. Okay. So, Sigil Master, whoever the fuck. Okay, that's clearly way off, because, look. The degrees are completely incorrect. Okay, 25, 52, south, 34, 22, east. Okay. Nope, that can't be it either. And here... Okay, yeah, so this is not some sort of mega boss. Fair enough. Let's take a look at Corroded Wasteland. What could it be? I don't know, a whole bunch of, like, iron or something? Just out here rusting in the middle of a desert? Maybe some Ngwith and shit left over. Oh! Oh, no! Uh-oh. <laughs> Hold the fuck up! Is it the dude? Is that the fucking dude? The Hellfire... It is! Durudugan. Oh, we aren't ready for this yet. We're not all level capped. Oh, shit. Look at him. Dude is massive. Oh, my God. How did he just jump out like that? Let's see. We totally looked at the coordinates. I mean, it was close, but not quite. Huh. Let's see. Does it actually mention anything here of... No. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess I must have heard of this location while I was looking them up or something. Alright. Let us quick load here. We'll quick load back out into the world map. That way, whenever we're ready to... Show do a showdown with this dude. We'll get access to that fun little animation, right? It'll be even more interesting to take him on. Good thing, though, although he pops down like he's ready to fucking go, we still have an opening advantage, right? We can enter stealth and all of that. Take him on stealthily, at least get stealth attacks, proper positioning and all that. Although it is meant to be a pretty tough fight. At least you can begin it sort of on your terms, right? All right, and we are back. Okay, so hopefully we don't have to clear that out in order to accomplish the whatever filling of the map, the cartography mission, right? Let's see, should we check out these ruins or... Yeah, these ruins are probably it, right? Because didn't we come to the discovery that each one of them was associated with a god? Yeah, Tangaloa, Hall of the Unseen, Amir's Roost. Well, I guess Cavern of Zar Tuk Tuk wasn't. I mean, you know what? It, it could be. <laughs> Maybe Zar Tuk Tuk was <laughs> hoping to ascend or something. Right? It was a religious thing of some descript, right? Okay. Oh, no, wait. Didn't it have, like, Skanite shit in there? I can't recall, but didn't it? I think so. Let's check out Winding Pass first. The path winds up into the hills, narrowing too little wider than a cart. The cliffs offer a sheer drop down into the crashing sea, the water foaming white where it throws itself against the rocks. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Listen to him laugh. You realize that what you initially took to be several large, lumpy stones are, in fact, Aotans, two-headed monstrosities. As you watch, one of them absentmindedly lifts a boulder and hurls it into the sea. The Aotans guffaw, their laughter guttural. Speak to the wilder. Look for an alternative route. Sneak up on the Aotans. Return the way you came. Should we try and sneak up on them? Oh, we failed! <laughs> Fuck me. Palagina leads you along the cliff, stepping lightly and keeping low. When a heavy grunt from above draws your attention upward. 
The Aeotans glower down at you, one of them pointing down at you with a sausage-like finger. The other bellows. A roar you worry will throw you from the outcropping. The stone shakes with their approach. All right, we'll take them on. Have we fully filled out their bestiary log? I'm not sure. Because if not, we'll get some more XP for our group here. Otherwise, hey, you know what? Some woot loot. We could use the money, right? Good stuff either way. It's a win-win. Oh shit, yo, there are a lot, and we are in a bad position. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what level they are, though. They may be pretty low level. Okay. Adair, run up in there, head them off. Let's see here. Maya, how about you lay down your mark on this one here on the left? There we are. Great. Palagina, can you hit them with your shit yet? Oh, there we go. Okay. And run up here. Can't make a dent. Good. Let's do this. Okay. Good, good, good. Where am I at? Am I engaged? No, I'm not. Oh, he is coming after me. Oh shit. Alright. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Let's see. Uh well, this ain't great, but <laughs> it could be worse. Let's see. Let's have Maya do her shit on him. Fuck it, I guess I'll shoot him. Why not? Good, knock him back. And just keep firing into him. Good, good, good. We'll have Maya do her double shot. Good, he seems like stuck there or some shit. Alright. And... Yeah, let's just finish him. <laughs> Normal. Send Ishii in there. Let's see, Ishii go after this one now. Good. Here, let's actually change Ishii's AI. There we are. Just auto-attack stuff. Okay, who got the marker now? Is it this one? It looks like it. Huh. Oh yeah, there it is, marked for the hunt. Okay, apply the wounding strike. And let's fire away again here. Very good. Swap weapons. And let's go after this dude. Push him off. Okay. Let's see. Is their debuff still active? Yes, it is. Okay. We can try and launch some of this as Palagina. There we go. Great. Swap our weapons again. Fire away into them. Let's see, a dare. Could have you knock him again. Why not? Right between the eyes. Good shit. This weapon's no good to me. Alright, let's swap weapons again. Fire away. And let's make sure Maya has her shit popping off. There we are. And look at that. She does so many shots now because of her. Yeah, because of twin shots in conjunction with her weapon, right? Huh. Okay. Yeah, she shoots four times at once when she twin shots, doesn't she? Okay. Let's keep a monitor on this situation with her. It makes no difference. Let's do this. Well, that one did not. Yeah, how come sometimes it doesn't? Because her weapon should shoot multiple projectiles, right? Yeah, fire two shots before reloading, but has reduced range. Hmm. Okay. Need something stronger. Weird. Yeah, I'm not sure how well it works with that. Captain. Sure. All right. Just a bunch of aye, aye. unimportant stuff. Okay. Swap back to this. No XP. Anything else around here, though? Worth picking up? Random world loot? Something like that? No, it doesn't seem that way. Over here... Nah, no, seems like a whole lot of nothing. Okay, fair enough. Let's head on back out. Alright. And let's search this place. Lowland Sands. Is this like a proper village, or what? 
No, it's a little encounter. As you descend from the high mountain paths, you find a small camp nestled in the sand. Tents, tired horses with their legs camped out, campfires crackling. It seems far too active for an ambush to be in wait. A small group approaches, a motley band of kith bearing quality arms and armor. The foremost, a deeply tanned dwarf, raises a hand in greeting. You're coming down the pass? She asks. Don't suppose that means you've dealt with those filthy Aotans, does it? Who are you? I dealt with them. Permanently. Let's say I had killed them. How much would that be worth to you? Who are you? She blinks and wipes her forehead with a rag. Suppose that's a fair question. I'm Zondran, and we're the Adragon Adventuring Company, out of the Living Lands. That's the Adraban Adventuring Company, interjects a tall, finely armored human with skin like chipped obsidian. Huh. Oh, Adraban and Adragon. Okay, gotcha. The dwarf scoffs. For the last time, Franco, no, it is not. You want to be the Audrabons? You go be it somewhere else. A pale elf in loose robes, his beard beaded with sweat, sighs and massages his forehead. About those Aotan, he says. I know that face. Wojka? Maya squints at a member of the party. And Almawa, her azure head shorn short to either side of a crest of black braids, nods to Maya. Rua, it's been a while. You two know each other? Ranganui matched us up on the shooting range to see if we would get along. Maya folds her arms and tongues the inside of her cheek. We didn't. <laughs> All right, let's say I had killed them. How much would that be worth to you? The adventurers glance among themselves and the dwarf scratches her head. Honestly, I'd not given it a lot of thought. Usually people pay us to go killing things, but these damn Aotan have been blocking the journey inland for weeks. Damn near crushed Midge with a rock. Wait, don't we know a Midge? Didn't Seraphin know someone named Midge? A small hearth orlin nods vigorously. Too close by half. Almost took my ear off. Yo, we, that is totally... Seraphin's Midge. The dwarf looks you over. You seem a forthright sort. Let's say an even 2,000 copper. In mixed currency, of course. They're very dead. Now pay up. I killed them, but keep your coin. And yeah, they're very dead. I'll take the money. The woman claps. Outstanding. Best damn news I've heard in weeks. The Almawa standing behind the dwarf sighs. And here I thought we'd have an opportunity to test our mettle on this venture. The robed pale elf glances at her. Death finds us all in time, Wojka. No need to rush his embrace. The party's small Orlin tosses you a heavy pouch. Your coin, as requested. The dwarf gestures towards the tents. Seeing as you've gotten our whole venture started up again, the least we could do is let you share our fire for a spell. Join their camp. Why not? You step into the camp and come to sit beside a fire. Although it looks like they intended to put it out before you got there, the Almawa feeds it another log. The dwarf gestures to a pot hanging over the flames. Got some stew left. Fish and vegetables. Nothing fancy. I'd like to know more about your company. Know anything about this island? Attempt to steal from them. Eat and rest. I'd rather just take your stuff. Attack. Yo! Alright. Tell me about your company. The dwarf taps a scar on her dusky chin. Well, we formed in the Living Lands. It's where Midge and me hail from. She gestures to the short Orlin. She's our mind breaker. Franco here is from Old Valia a sworn brother of the Darkotsi Paladini. The tall man clangs a gauntlet against his breastplate and bows at the waist. Man, they are a regular adventuring company, huh? They're on their own campaign, aren't they? Zondrin gestures to the pale elf. That's Lisholdir, 
from the white that wends. He handles the magic. And Wochka, she nods to the island Almawa, left Rawatai when she ran out of things to put her axe in. Anyone else you see around's a hireling, but still some of the best. We've been all over the living lands and deadfire both. Midge grins. Right now we're drawing coin, often a dear and noble, as members of the Deadfire Archipelago Explorer Society. The Orlin chuckles quietly. More or less. Oh shit. Haven't we don't we know vaguely of the Deadfire Archipelago Explorer Society? Hmm. Oh look, a Living Lands check. I'm sure you have some great stories to tell. What are the Living Lands like? I'm surprised you've survived this long. Ooh, I either want to know what the Living Lands are like, or tell me a story. What are the Living Lands like? Zondrin inhales deeply. Absolutely incredible. You've never seen so much green. Birds, every color of the spectrum. Lizards like living statues of gem. And the hunting. Didn't know much, and didn't know how much I'd miss it until I left. Midge nods along pensively. Sure, half the plants are like to try to eat you, but at least there's something to see. She scowls out at the desert. Why'd you leave? Zondrin breaks your gaze, turning her attention to the campfire. Her dog died. Lisholder states simply, as if noting the weather. The dwarf winces. Fang's a wolf, not a dog, and a good one besides. I keep him with me. She rests a closed fist between her breasts. Always will. Know anything about this island? The explorer shakes her head with a snort. Hardly seen most of it. Came on land a few miles that way. She jerks a thumb towards the western coast. God's benighted and Yotan prevented us from going any further. The Valian grouses, and the Orland's ears bounce with her vigorous nod. The dwarf smiles. We're looking for some ruins that are supposedly out here. Island's so desolate, though, it's hard to imagine anyone building on it. It's certainly... sandy. Thanks. <laughs> the Valian laughs, a warm, quick sound that slips away as quickly as it appeared. Ah, quite true. I've sand in places I didn't know I had. I weep for the women who will know me after this place. Oh, no! <laughs> the Orlin shakes her head. We all weep for the women with the misfortune to know you. Jealousy, he winks at you. Midge resents my innumerable conquests. Midge crosses her arms and raspberries. <laughs> Hardly. Attempt to steal from them. No, they're too nice. They are too nice. They even paid us. Eat and rest. Yeah, let's eat and rest. You eat with the explorers, sharing tales over the dying fire. Yo, let me tell you all about this. We just... Yo, we just shot up the Beast of Winter? I don't know about you all trapped in a fucking desert. Guess what? We went into a fucking weird-ass parallel god dimension... We saw Widewind, the fall of Ukaizo, and some person who was in a trial. That one wasn't so interesting, but it was weird and freaky. <laughs> Eventually, you call it a night, and they offer you a fallen comrade's tent for the evening. Waking up, you thank the group and take your leave. They wish you safe travels. Oh, wow, that was so cool. I loved that. Just that little interaction with them. Man! That was so awesome that Maya even knew one of them, right? Shit, what would have happened if we had Seraphin with us? Because he's totally spoken about Midge before, right? I'm not mistaken in that, am I? Seraphin knows a Midge. Huh. Alright, well, I suppose when next we come back, we will investigate the sand-swept ruins, which seems like exactly what we are meant to do. And hopefully it is the last thing that we need to do for this quest, at least for this stage of it, because if it is not, well, I'm fucked. <laughs> Until next time, please take care of each other.